I'd say that first of all, uh, we start uh, to analyze an analysis by assessing how well, it is, how efficiently is capital allocated. And in that respect, uh, I think that there is, uh, um, there is little doubt that the capital is much better allocated in the US than it is in Europe. And uh, the demonstration is a very easy one. Uh, the number of companies uh, recently founded in the, the US that have reached uh, substantial market caps, as a matter of fact, they happen now to be the biggest market caps, uh, is, is incredibly higher compared to Europe. And uh, of course, uh, you can argue that uh, Europe is a fragmented market also because of linguistic issues. Uh, you can argue that uh, the US was particularly skillful in creating a Silicon Valley where they were able to combine academic, uh, uh, venture capital and talent. Uh, but at the end of the day, the fact that uh, there are hardly any unicorns in Europe uh, tells you that uh, given Europe is a, is a, a massive source of talent, uh, tells you that something is really wrong uh, in, uh, in the allocation of capital in Europe. That is something we have to acknowledge. Now, what is uh, uh, what are the policy making do, makers doing to uh, uh, address that issue? Uh, I think they are essentially doing two things. First of all, they are trying, although in a very confused way, to alter the purpose of companies. You now have a number of initiatives that tend to stress uh, ESG parameters, uh, CSR parameters, uh, they want company to do something different than maximizing profits. And uh, in a way, they are asking uh, surreptitiously to companies to create positive externalities. One of which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the idea that uh, by doing so, uh, capital will be uh, more uh, efficiently allocated. As a matter of fact, here you have a massive difference in mentality between Europe and the US. In, in the US, uh, uh, there is a much more risk, uh, uh, risk friendly approach uh, and uh, uh, the, accept the social acceptance of failure is much higher. In Europe, uh, you have a completely different attitude and there is much more attention to the protection of jobs uh, and to the, uh, the protection of existing uh, company. I always make an example, which is uh, uh, probably a bit provocatory, uh, provocative, but uh, if you think about 2008, uh, when Lehman collapsed, uh, the employees of Lehman uh, very nicely went up to the rooms, uh, collected their personal items, put them in a box and left. If uh, uh, in, in, in touch wood, the same were to happen to Unicredit or Societe Generale or whatever, people would essentially uh, lock themselves in the building uh, and mm. you would probably need the army to get them out. So the, the, the mentality is very profoundly different. And th this is something we have to acknowledge. In that respect, uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the idea to alter uh, the purpose of a company through, poly through the initiatives of policy, make policy makers is deeply wrong. I think Milton Friedman is often misquoted because you know he said uh, the purpose of a company must be the maximization of profits. But uh, if you read the, over the overall sentence, he said the uh, profit should be maximized within the rules, not uh, within the existing rules. And I think one trend that we see in Europe, which is very dangerous, is that Europe, to some extent, also because of the complexity of European Union, gives up the idea that rules can be efficient. Uh, the uh, process of legislation at the European Union level is so cumbersome, so uh, heavily impacted by compromise and by the very different agendas of uh, the different countries. That at the end of the day, there is a big temptation to say, you know what, we are not able to deliver efficient rules. Uh, 
So let's leave uh, uh, to a more voluntaristic approach uh, uh, the solution of the problem. And you know, in, uh, in Europe, there are two things that are now uh, uh, very much top of the agenda. One is uh, 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 the, uh, let's call it environmental issue, the idea that we are asking the planet uh, too much compared to what it can deliver. And the second thing, which is also existing in the US, but it's much more of a problem here in Europe, uh, is social inequality. Uh, of course, we are uh, living uh, you know, in a world where we have negative interest rates uh, re in real terms, and therefore people who own assets get wealthier and wealthier, and on the contrary, people who happen not to own assets are in a more and more dire condition. Uh, so the first point is that uh, uh, Europe should, in my opinion, go back to an orderly legislative process and have more trust in the negative rule. I saying that companies should be, uh, should be obliged not to provide negative externalities, while I am much more skeptical about the idea that we should ask companies on a voluntary basis to provide positive also because you have a big risk in that respect, that uh, the moment you don't set the parameters clear, uh, everybody can cherry pick. In fact, if you go through today the, 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 uh, the uh, ESG report that is now compulsory in Europe uh, for companies, uh, you, can, you go across very different industry, a totally uh, erratic uh, uh, mass of parameters that everybody chooses as he pleases, essentially, at the end of the day. So, yes, that may bring as a whole uh, uh, some voluntaristic uh, approach and results, but uh, it's not, uh, it's definitely not going to, uh, to solve the issue. Uh, the other uh, thing is uh, Europe is a, is a continent where capital markets are much less developed uh, compared to the US. And therefore, the banking system is much more important when it comes to the efficient allocation of capital. And there again, and there I, I, I uh, link to what David was saying, yeah? uh, everything which turns around the MIFID myth, myth approach is, in my opinion, very wrong. Because at the end of the day, we are asking banks to be more capitalized. Uh, we are thinking that uh, uh, the, the, the remedy for avoiding uh, banking issues is uh, uh, that they have to be more capitalized. But uh, th the moment we do so, we immediately reduce the efficiency of, of the capital markets. Because as uh, you've seen many times in the past, uh, uh, by imposing banks to have a higher and higher capital ratio, you essentially push them not to lend to riskier companies and enterprises. Because, uh, as you know very well, the moment you allocate capital to, uh, to, uh, to a loan, uh, it consumes more capital, the, the riskier is the loan. And so, at the end of the day, by uh, uh, imposing higher and higher capital ratios, you push banks not to finance the initiatives that are indeed more riskier, but also potentially able to provide the highest returns. And I think that uh, one of the reasons why you see such a, a massive difference between the level of uh, efficient startups that you have in the US and the one that you have in Europe is precisely because it is much more different from for European companies uh, uh, for European startups to get funding. Uh, also, of course, uh, uh, venture capital plays a much smaller role, uh, and that is due to, to cultural reasons and, uh, and so on. But I think that uh, the, the banking system is, uh, is the, um, has the, main, the, the biggest responsibility in that respect. So coming to a conclusion, uh, I think that uh, uh, if we really want uh, Europe to bridge the gap and uh, uh, compared to the, to the US in terms of capital efficiency, we need, first of all, to stick to the rule that uh, it's not by uh, trying surreptitiously to alter 
company's purpose is that we will get the result. That is def definitely the wrong path. And at the same time, it's not by having uh, uh, banks uh, so heavily capitalized that we will avoid the issues uh, uh, that we have experienced in the past. For a very simple reason, because, uh, uh, you know, banks in, are, are, are in a way like, like human bodies. Uh, by making them more, more capitalized, more heavily capitalized, you make them stronger. But uh, you can be Hercules, uh, but you are not, if you're not allowed to breathe, uh, you're going to die anyway. So it's much more important to, play, to pay attention to the flux, of, uh, 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 to the inflows and outflows of, of money, rather than on uh, the strength of capital. And by in, in, uh, in Europe, you have, in reality, negative interest rates, so it is uh, uh, the real issue for banks is that uh, they cannot make money by lending efficiently. So even if you make them stronger on a capital basis, uh, if they are not able to produce income and cash flow, uh, it, it will be uh, a catch-22 because they will, be get, they will get weaker and weaker because they don't provide returns. So they will be less and less capitalized. And, and the more you're going to ask them, to be stronger, the more problems you will have. And one, one analysis that is very, uh, very telling is that in order to make the capital, uh, the market capitalization of a JP Morgan, you need the 20 biggest European banks. Again, this is a, clearly an anomaly, and an anomaly also driven by the fact that, that uh, uh, the shareholder of a European bank uh, thinks that it can be diluted at any time because the moment the regulator feel that capital is not sufficient, uh, the banks will be asked to raise more capital. And of course, this is a, this is a hanging sword on the head of an investor. And uh, this is something that uh, should be very much investigated at the European level because uh, uh, very few people talk about this destruction of our banking system. And uh, uh, if we don't change that approach, uh, uh, we are condemning Europe to, to being uh, the new Japan with essentially 30 years of, of deflation. And uh, uh, the death can be very slow, but ultimately we, uh, we, we are most likely to find ourselves in 30 years in a situation which is worse than the current. The World Knowledge Forum.